Welcome to episode 8 of the Gladiator Fit Philosophies YouTube channel and podcast. As you know, this is ground zero for athletes and those who want to get viable information on nutrition and uh, matters pertaining to health and uh, overall, you know, well-being. So without further ado, I'm going to talk about the dangers of factory farming. Dun dun dun. <laughs> So, if you haven't noticed, uh, our biosphere is threatened by a number of ecological existential problems. I mean, at least anyone who's remotely paying attention to anything. I'm sure you guys all know how corrupt the pharmaceutical industry is, as well as the fossil fuel industry. As well as the mainstream factory farm meat industry. And this is an industry that is causing ecological disasters in the name of profit, along with the complete savage mistreatment of animals and the planet, which is literally characterized in the factory farm meat industry. So believe it or not, you know, the dangers of the mainstream meat industry has been known for a very long time, you know, since uh, I'd say the late 1800s and the early part of the 20th century. Um, in 1905, there's a famous book, if you guys haven't heard of it, or you probably have, it's called The Jungle, and it's by Uptown Sinclair. And this book highlighted the grisly, ghastly, horrendous conditions of the meat industry back then. And you have to think, what has happened now in the you know 21st century is the mainstream factory meat industry has initially adopted the industrial model for farming and agriculture, the same type of industrial model that they use for other types of industries. So the welfare and the health of the animals along with the environment have been completely disregarded. And when I you know, when I say that the industrial model has been applied to agriculture, I'm literally discussing how the industry has bypassed the normal biological life cycle of the animal and has used science and different applications to change the natural process of the animal. So what the mainstream factory, I call it concentration camp industry, um, they feed animals, say for example cows, um, an unnatural toxic diet of corn, wheat, soy, or a combination of, you know, one of the three. And it's initially designed to fatten the animal up as quickly as possible. Um, it, and they also inject cows and chickens with um, hormones uh, like estrogen and other type and, and other growth hormones as well and the idea is to you know make them grow as fast as possible and which bypasses their normal growth cycle you see the normal growth cycle for an animal is much longer than what these factory farm you know concoctions produce they then coop up the animals in a dark room full of feces waste and diseased animals that are sleeping in you know, crapping and living in an, an open cesspool. Frankly, it's a it's a recipe for a new pandemic, but that's a different conversation. And what has happened is they've literally industrialized this system. So instead of letting the animals be outside and get the real sunlight, they figured they'd cram up in you know cram them in a room, shoot them up, and they'll grow to a very large you know, animal. The idea is to get them as fat and as large as quick as possible. So factory farmed meat is literally where the majority of Americans get their meat. It's extremely unhealthy. And let me remind you, because I know a whole bunch of vegans right now are probably getting a, a, a wet dream, but meat itself is not bad at all. It's actually one of the most nutrient dense foods one can eat, but it's the factory farmed concentration diseased meat which is killing people. So after the animal goes through that horrendous process of a very accelerated life cycle, the animal is slaughtered into cuts of meat which are then soaked into like a water chemical saline solution, sometimes chlorine, which is literally designed to make the meat swell and take in extra water because the industry gets paid the larger the, the animal is. And the chlorine is also soaked on chicken to kill a lot of the horrendous pathogens that you know that come about from you know the conditions in the factory farm but when you eat the concentration camp factory meat you're absorbing large amounts of antibiotics which is actually creating resistance in a lot of humans so much to the point where there's hospitals that can't even treat certain people with antibiotics because they've developed such a resistance which is mainly from eating these diseased meat as well as stress hormones and something called uh, polyamines which is like a type of edema 
that occurs in the meat which greatly increase your chance of getting cancer. You pair that with excess estrogen that's found in the food. Um, excess estrogen is greatly responsible for increasing your risk of prostate cancer. And there's this big misconception that high testosterone increases your rate of prostate cancer that's been thoroughly debunk. It's actually large amounts of estrogen that increase your rate as a male of getting prostate cancer. So meat is not the problem. It's the, the you know, the factory farmed meat. I eat plenty of high quality, you know, grass fed, grass finished beef and pasture raised meats. And it's very important that the meat you eat, you know, has lived in an open pasture, you know, on a farm, preferably a regenerative farm that feeds them, you know, an ancestral type of diet that is most conducive for the animal. So if you're looking to find good quality meat, you should talk to your local farmer or um, a farmer's market. And listen, if you don't live close to many farms, you could reach out to certain companies like ButcherBox, which I religiously use every month. And what I like about ButcherBox is they contract with farmers that provide the highest quality of animal welfare that you can find. They're looking for the way the animal is raised, the type of food they're eating, and the most natural rearing on a pasture that you can honestly find on the market. I've never felt better eating meat from butcher box and frankly you can you can thaw the meat and you can't even smell it. It's so fresh that you can taste and you can feel the difference. And again, I'm not here to sell you on any, anything. I'm just trying to provide you value and explain to you that even if you're in a circumstance where you're in some big city or you're really isolated from, you know, possible access to, you know, clean quality meat, there are ways to get it. And I'm also going to do another video about how you can get produce that is of farm quality and you're supporting local farmers. It's very critical that you know where your food comes from. But if you don't know where your meat comes from, you are more than likely eating it from a factory that you would not support. So I hope this gave you some value and you know, I'm always going to be making content that will bring you value. And if you did enjoy it, you know, leave a comment and I'll even put the link for a discount if you want to use ButcherBox. And like I said, I'm not here to sell you anything. I'm here to uh, provide you what I feel is the best value for your health. So much love. Take care.